Hello friends. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to St. Bernard Acres. How y'all are? This is Friday, or Thursday, June 5th. A little bit windy, it's getting ready to rain. We got 10 days of rain coming, so, you know, according to the weather, but it rains all the time it seems. So what I did, I got last weekend, you know, I'm putting in my own septic system. So for those of you who are new to this, I'll explain this real quick. I need a septic system out here. I took a test on sewage treatment systems. And by passing that test, I got licensed to where I can install my own septic system and save a whole bunch of money by doing it myself. So last weekend, we set the tank and the sewer line all the way down to where the distribution box is going to be and all the schedule 40 pipe all the way back up to the house where it's going to tie in at and we have all that set so i called her and said look can you come out we're not going to be able to get to the leach field for a couple of weeks probably because we have to wait for it to dry up uh, can you inspect what I've got done so far so I can backfill all of that and let me know if I did it right? She came out today, but I was scared to death. My anxiety level was like up the air because I didn't know. We've never done this before. I didn't know what they checked. I did it the best way I could, and it's all fine. It's all passes. What I've got done so far is, is good for them. So I can go ahead and backfill all that, cover everything up, and start letting my backyard heal itself now. <laughs> that way, in a couple of weeks or three, whenever it dries out enough for us to put a leach field in, she can come back out and inspect just that part of it. And then I'll have my go permit, you know, everything will be good to go. So, and the leach field is going to be easier to do than that tank was, I hope. Um, but uh, real quick, I'll try to explain how a septic system works. It works a lot like your municipal, you know, sewage treatment system, you know, plants. Um, you have a tank buried in the yard somewhere. The minimum here is a thousand gallons. They're big tanks. And uh, what happens is everything from your house, your toilet, your shower, your washing machine, your sink, your dishwasher, everything goes to a main line and then into your septic system. And it comes out of the house, drops into the septic tank. All the solids float to the bottom, right? The liquid rises. Then it goes into the second half once it's risen, you know, once it gets up to a certain height that comes up. There's a baffle in there that it goes out of and goes down and into the leach field. This is a gravity fed system. That's the simplest septic there is. As long as you've got the slope, you can use a gra you know, if you don't have that, then you have to put in a second tank and a pump, you know, stuff like that. Mine's the simplest there is. Now I'm doing an infiltrator chamber leach field, right? The normal that everybody knows and that I knew until I started studying this, you dig the trench, you fill it full of gravel, you put perforated pipe in there, and you put gravel on top of that, then the geotextile fabric and cover it up and there's your leach field. I'm doing infiltrator chambers. I get a lot of questions about how these work, so I'm going to try to explain it as quickly as I can, which is hard for me. Um, but what happens from your tank, the, those enzymes, uh, that bacteria breaks all that stuff down. Then it goes over and there's an effluent. It's called effluent after it's all broken down into a liquid. And there's a filter because there's little solids left in it. But it comes out, just the liquid comes out of the tank and goes down and is dispersed in the leach field. I have to have 400 feet of leach lines so i'm going to have four lines a hundred feet long that pipe the influ effluence is going to be carried down that pipe to a distribution box so that in that distribution box the pipe comes in there'll be four lines going out one to each 
of the trenches, right? And then it's dispersed on the soil, right? And then it's absorbed. That's why you have a perk test. They have to determine how fast the water is absorbed into the earth. That determines the size of the leach field that you need based on ours is a two bed. They call it a, the minimum is two bedroom. 240 gallons a day is what has to leach as far as they're concerned. So there's all that math in there that figures that out. But you know, it gets, it gets broken down into water, basically. The water comes down, it's absorbed into the soil, the final greatest filter there is, and it's all filtered before it gets down to the water table. And then it comes back again as water. You know, it's just beautiful how it works. It's an anaerobic system, it's completely sealed. You know, the gases that are developed will go back through your plumbing and out your vent pipe that goes up to the up through the roof. Any gases, because it's a sealed system, there's no oxygen in it. So it's anaerobic. So that's the, the idea of how it works. The question people have are these infiltration chambers. Right? Based on the soil scientist here, I am only allowed to dig a trench that, 12, that is 12 inches deep. I cannot go any deeper than that. Now, I could come out of that distribution box. In my uh, trenches, I could put, you know, six inches of gravel, put the perf pipe down, put two inches of gravel over the top of that, and then there has to be six inches of soil on top of that. Right. Well, you can do it. You have to mound it up, you know, bring some dirt in and pack it down. But I'm eliminating all of the gravel and the perf pipe and all that kind of stuff is being eliminated by using these chambers. These things are, this particular size that I'm allowed to use is 8 inches high, 2 feet wide, and they're 4 foot long chambers. I'm doing 100 foot lines. I need 25 of these in each one. So I had to buy 100 of them. And like I said, this replaces all the gravel and all the perf pipe and everything. I'm going to come out of the distribution box with a line that goes, there's a start cap, a starting cap. That line goes to that starting cap. And then all the, the chambers are just hooked together and down the row. There's no pipe going all the way through it. It just, the water goes into there and works its way down. And then there's an end cap that I have to have a, an inspection port coming up out of the ground for each line. That, so they can look in there and see that all lines are being done equally. In the distribution box, you have these speed levelers. So all four lines are fed the same. So... That's the idea, but you have to do that with the gravel and the perf pipe, too. I mean, everything has to be, it all has to be equal. So, these infiltrator chambers, it's a little more expensive to go this route. But, I don't have, I would have to pay for gravel to be delivered out here. Pay for it all to be spread out. Pay for all the perf pipe, and I think it... It might have to be Schedule 40 pipe, per, you know, that goes through there. I don't know. 400 feet of that is pretty expensive. But I eliminate all that with these things, right? And I'm going to drop one of these down in there. I'm going to dig four feet, and I'm going to drop one of these down there. I'm going to shoot it, the elevation, and I'm going to dig four more feet. To show you how simple this is, all I have to do is take the next chamber... Put it in here like so. Ah, get in there. Drop it down. And there you go. Then I'll trench four more feet and I'll drop another one in. That's it. And then I backfill it. I have to have uh, six inches of soil on top of this. But these have little vents where it can leach out. And underneath them has a little bit of support there 
but that's all it takes. I'll have all of these, uh, like I said, 25 of them per line. Put an end cap on it with an inspection port, put a start cap at the beginning. There's the leach field. She comes out, make sure that everything, you know, and these it's real easy to follow the contour of my land because I have to build my leach field on a slope. I mean, I can't take it downhill. But I can follow it around, follow that slope, do my first one, follow that slope, do the second one, and uh, keep these things at 12 feet, at 12 inches. That's how simple these are. So, I had a lot of questions about infiltrator chambers. I hope this answers them, because that's all there is to them. They, don't, they weigh 20 pounds each, maybe. Uh, and you just drop them in place and she'll come out after we're done and she'll use her uh, transit, go along, check level. Cause they have to be within, well, they say within three inches, but we laid it out when she came out. We got our transit out and we were going along and, you know, we get it within an inch. And uh, then you backfill it and your septic system is done. So that's the infiltration chamber. And that's basically how a septic system works, a sewage treatment system, a gravity-fed home sewage treatment system, right? A couple of good things about it, right, for us preppers. If SHTF happens and all the municipal things are done, you know, we can't, you know, that's going to be a huge problem is sewage when nothing's working, right? This doesn't require any power, right? I can take my RV toilet that's in the cabin and just dump it right into my sewage system now, you know? Now, the one thing you have to be careful with on these things, because it's a real beautiful thing how this, this biologically works and, you know, you can add some a little bit of enzyme to it to help do you can't add a lot but you have to be careful about what you put in there too because this is what mean this is what causes you to have to uh, get it pumped out more often right you don't want to flush baby wipes down there you don't want to flush kitty litter down your toilet that's you know it's clay uh, who hasn't done some painting and wash your, your paint rollers and paint brushes off in the utility sink. All that paint goes down now into your septic system. That can't be ate up and changed <laughs> biologically. You know, too much grease from your kitchen, right? That doesn't break down. So you need to be, you know, aware of what you're flushing down and what you're dumping into your septic system. There's just certain things. I mean, use common sense is what you do. You know, uh, dental floss is not going to biodegrade. It has to be biodegradable. You know, as long as you don't load it up with stuff like that, it, you should be able to go five or six years. We should be able to go five or six years without even thinking about getting it pumped. Because it's just the two of us. We're not going to go through 240 gallons of water a day. So, that's the basics of how to use a gravity-fed sewage treatment system. You're septic. <laughs> you know, I don't have to worry about aerator chambers. I don't have to worry about power to pumps or any of that kind of stuff. Because I, mine's gravity-fed. And it's the cheapest one you can get. Thank goodness we qualified for that. Uh, but that's it. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, like I said, I passed my first part of the, the install, so all of that is good. That was the scary part is the tank, man. We went forever trying to get that thing perfectly level, pl everything, right? Dump 600 gallons of water in. It's got 600 gallons of water in it already, but that will keep it from floating, you know? When we start backfilling, it's going to want to push it around. Well, now we put over 5,000 pounds of water in it. 
I don't think it's going to get pushed around too much. Uh, but yeah, everything passed, and I'm just tickled to death. So now we can go on to phase two. And uh, I just thought I'd take this opportunity to explain to you what infiltration chambers are, since I mention them so often, and how simple they work. But this is Joe out here at uh, St. Bernard Acres. It is hot and muggy, so you know it's getting ready to downpour. And I'm going to try to knock out some mowing um, before that happens. But remember, I'm, I'm a live stream tonight. This is Thursday, June 5th. I'll try to do a live stream at 8 o'clock from the cabin since I'm out here. And uh, I appreciate y'all. Remember to like, share, comment. Those comments really help. And I wish I got more comments on my, my uh, videos. I think it really makes a difference. Just a thumbs up or a something, you know, that shows... Um, interaction that really makes a difference but this is joe out here like i said i'll see you all tonight i'm out